In this video, we're going to be looking at the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. This version of Windows 8 is a little different from what you're used to and some will say for the better while others will say for the worse. Let's jump into Windows 8 by dragging up this image which is our new logon screen and log in with our Windows Live account. Immediately we'll see a new SAR screen which has been improved upon since the developer preview. Here we have all of our Metro apps from mail to weather and messaging. If we right click on any empty space at the bottom of the screen we'll see all apps and this is where you'll find your programs. You can see that they're all arranged in the same tile format as a SAR screen. And if we right click on say computer a few options will pop up. Clicking on properties will bring up a familiar window. For this video I'm using an AMD Phenom 2 X6 1090T Black Edition processor with 4GB of RAM inside of a virtual machine with two cores of the six available to me. If we switch back to the start screen and go back to all apps, clicking on this icon in the bottom right corner will take us into a category view that shows us our apps and software in alphabetical order. This makes finding what we need incredibly easy. Clicking on the weather app from the start screen gives us a forecast for the day and upcoming week in less or more detail. In addition to that, we can see an hourly forecast, although I have to note that at the moment the vertical and horizontal scroll bars seem to conflict when you're using a scroll wheel on a mouse. I hope this is a bug and that it just needs to be fixed. We're also presented with maps of the region and surrounding areas in addition to history, weather from rainfall to sunshine and snow. Going back to maps, we see a small video displaying the temperatures and weather. Another feature which has been talked about a lot is the new app store. Clicking on the tile will bring up something to you that looks like the Xbox Live dashboard, Windows Phone Marketplace or Android's app marketplace. Apps being categorized into social, entertainment, games etc with the ability to see top free as well as top paid apps. To show you how easy it is to install and use an app, we'll click on Evernote. Once here we can click install and it will begin. Next we'll choose UCAM, it looks like an interesting app. When an app is installed you'll get a notification which you can click and launch the app from. If you need to log in you can do that and settings or documents will be synchronized if necessary. Clicking on top free does what any other app store does which shows you the best free apps of the week, day or month. These will understandably and most likely be metro apps Something that has been around for a while is Xbox Live integration with Windows. Xbox Live games looks and feels like the Xbox 360 dashboard and gives you the ability to download games from the Windows Game Marketplace, as well as keep track of your personal game activity. Here we see games I've played on both the Xbox 360 and PC. We can also grab details on games and any DLC from this app. If I click on Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you'll see how everything is set up. Customizing the avatar is possible in the same way as on the Xbox 360. The video app allows you to watch the latest TV which I'm assuming is through Zoom and music allows you to browse, listen to and buy from the library of music which again I'm assuming is Zoom which I don't use. The People app allows you to connect to the Facebook and Twitter to get updates straight to your desktop in addition to those on your Windows Live Messenger contact list. To make communication seamless as well as in real time, no need for third party software like TweetDeck. Sorry. Maps in Windows 8 is powered by Bing, which I'm judging isn't very accurate to acquiring your location, which is great because I don't want to be stalked. And you can choose a different view also. SkyDrive is another awesome piece of integration, allowing you to access your docs on the go and edit them in IE 10 or your default browser. This is particularly good if you're like me and need to keep appointments as well as medications up to date in a spreadsheet. Windows 8 brings charms to the desktop, allowing you to access devices, settings and other things. Just hover your mouse in the bottom right corner to bring them up. If we click on the settings, you can see control panel, PC info and other options. So let's click on more PC settings. If you've used the developer preview, this will look familiar. 
It used to be a control panel, but it's since changed. Here you can update windows, check your home group, sync your settings, access devices and more. Clicking on the personalized tab, we can select what apps we want on the lock screen and which one to show more details. We can also change the picture used for the lock screen, although I don't have any in this VM. Of course, clicking on the start screen allows you to change the background color, which also affects other Metro elements. A few other changes to Windows 8 include a new drive icon, and if you've used the developer preview or not, Windows 8 has a Office 2007-2010 style ribbon UI, which places commonly used actions in view. And I know a lot of people do not like this ribbon UI, but it can be hidden. Going back to apps, we have a calendar app which is integrated with Windows Live and some other services. This is a clean and responsive app, allowing you to add new agendas easily and seamlessly in addition to changing the views. Messaging brings Windows Live Messenger integration, allowing you to chat with other people on your contact list, which is a big plus for those who use Windows Live Messenger. Mail allows you to connect to multiple email accounts like Hotmail and Gmail and is smooth and responsive as many other apps. I can say that this is comparable to Windows Live Mail, just a whole lot cleaner. Another change or two includes the file transfer box, which now has a more detailed view of speed in the form of a neat graph. And another change is a more powerful task manager. Processes shows you currently running apps and processes. The performance tab shows CPU usage, memory usage, internet usage, among other things, all in a clean form. The application tab explains itself. Startup allows you to see what programs or apps are starting up with your PC and allows you to disable any that you don't want or don't recognize. Now this feature has been available in Windows for a long time but required some tech savvy know-how to find. The other tabs we don't need to go through. If you like the look of Windows 8 Consumer Preview and want to try it, you can go to the page for 32-bit and 64-bit image files. I recommend dual booting or running it in a virtual box if you want to keep your PC safe and hassle free. I hope you enjoyed this tour through the Windows 8 Consumer Preview and until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.